Ah, hello there. And how are you doing? Oh, you're doing that well. I am so glad to hear it. And so am I. Guess what? I am now on a list and in a queue to get an appointment to get a vaccination. How about that? Now that's progress. I haven't had it yet, but I will eventually. I know I will, and then I can come out of quarantine. By the way, this is Saturday at the end of week 48 of lockdown and quarantine. Hmm. I wonder if I might get a parole by Easter. Oh, well, we'll, we'll have to think about that. Now, I had did a shakedown flight on the simulator following all of the slight problems that I had on the previous flight. I contacted Mr. Napolitano at Wideview and he gave me some very, very precise instructions on what to do to correct the problem. And it corrected the problem. So no more flashing on the screen or changes in the um, in the scenery that were unexpected. So everything has been worked out. Now, one other thing before we get started in, I was asked, how do I attach my little charts um, tablet to the yoke on the captain's side? So this is how I do it. As you can see here, this is the bracket. I got this from Amazon and I took off the arm that came with this because I didn't need that. The arm has a big clip on the end to clamp onto a round pole. What I did is I took that off and then on the yoke, I put a bracket, a metal bracket, screwed it on, it's bolted in place, bent it into, uh, into the angle and then attached the stand onto it. So there you can see how that device clamps on. Okay, good. Right, well, if we're ready, let's go on board Ryanair 186. Hello there, welcome aboard. Take your seat, why don't you? Buckle up, because we're going to go to Dusseldorf today. Here we are. We're in Hamburg in Germany. We're at gate A4A and the Hamburg code is Echo Delta Delta Hotel. I have Active Sky low, uh, loaded onto flight 2 which is down there at this side and that is running these three magnificent external view screens. I also have Active Sky loaded onto Flight 1, which is located over on that side, and that runs all of the screens and the equipment in here, in the cockpit. So I've separated the two. As a result, the frame rate that I have on these three outside screens on this very uh, high impact airport scenery is 25.7, 25.3, anyways, plus 25, almost 26 frames per second. It used to be as low as seven if I was on a good day, perhaps even eight. So I've made a lot of progress since the day I ran all of this off one computer. Now it's two computers. 
And we're going to go today down to Dusseldorf. It's a short run. The flight uh, route is about 190 miles. So Dusseldorf is Echo Delta Delta Lima. We're going to be following the flight path of Eurowings flight Echo Whiskey 7066. And Michael, this is the flight that you requested. So here we are. We're finally going to do it. You, you asked me to do this months ago. Well, finally, I've got everything up. Everything is working or was. And hopefully it will be working throughout today. As a little bit of interest, I had some bugs and I talked to Mr. Napolitano at Wideview about them and they're all fixed. So I don't have any more of those sudden scene shifts that you saw on the last video. Well, shouldn't be anyway. We should be fine. All right, so if you're ready, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to turn on the battery, turn on the fuel, and let's get the APU going, shall we? It's not the warmest of days, even though the sky is not looking too bad out there. Still, we need to warm things up just a little bit for our wonderful passengers. Ah, yes, got to take care of them. This is Ryanair we're on. All right, the needle has come up. The low pressure light has gone off. And in a moment, the engine gas temperature gauge on the auxiliary power unit will drop. And then this button will light up. And when that lights up, then we will switch to the generator on that unit. And there it is. Right, we now have 115 volts showing on our screen here for powering such things as the galley. We need to be able to get a good cup of tea. Emergency lights are on. No smoking, fasten seat belts. Let's see if I can get somebody to bring me a drink. What do you think? What do you think my chances are? Yeah, you're probably right. And then over here, window heat left and right, the all important probes. And then there's the electrical pumps. And we'll turn on now the heat and the bleed unit so that we've got there we go I can now hear the heating system kicking on and starting to blow out through the blowers and I'll turn on the uh, aircraft light so people know that we're in here and we're doing things okay the light says the forward service hatch is open and the Air stairs are down so that people are able to start to come on board. All right, now on here we need to start to get things set up. Our altitude that we're going to be flying at today is 28,000 feet. So I'm going to put 28,000 in here because normally. Of course, ATC will assign you the altitude, but we're taking some shortcuts today, so shh, don't tell the air traffic control. And 28,000 will go into a flight altitude here. And we'll have a look and see what the airport altitude is at Dusseldorf. And the airport elevation is 147, so we'll need to put 150 here in our landing altitude. All right, we're moving along. Now we'll turn on our 
GPS and get ourselves located. Now we can set the IRS position. We're going to go in here, we're going to put in our star position. There we go, we're putting in EDDH and we're at gate 04A. According to the coordinates, we should be at 53379 by east 10003. So 53. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the new features that PMDG have for this particular aircraft. So I'm going to put in the county route. And here it is, there's our flight plan in. I'm going to select it. I'm going to do request. And in a moment, it will come up and ask to load. In the meantime, I'm going to put RYR 186 in there, because that's our flight number. Now, the route upload is ready, so I'm going to push load. And it says root up link is loading. So it's putting in, entering all of the information about the entire flight route. Good. It's done. So activate to save. I'm going to go to the fix and put in EDDL. And we want a four mile radius, a 10 mile radius and the 30 mile radius. We need the 30 mile radius because that's the earliest point that P3D will allow us to contact the tower to get landing uh, instructions. And we need to know where the 30 miles are, right? So that's what we do. Now for departure, let's listen in to uh, Tune into Hamburg ATS, which is 124.32. So 124. Hamburg, airport information, Hotel 1242, Zulu wind 137 at 13, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition clear, temperature 112.5, altimeter 1011, landing and departing runway 15. The FR aircraft say direction of flight, all aircraft read back hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, Hotel. Aircraft are taking off on runway 15, so we're going to put in departure runway 15, and according to the information, we are going to be departing on Basu 5D. So Basu 5D, we'll put that in. Arrivals, according to the the plan, the destination landing should be a Halmeg 1G arrival at EDDL on 23 left. So we will put in ILS 23 left, Halmeg 1G, and we're going to do the bot transition. So we have the information, so now we can execute that. For the descent, the barometer at uh, destination is 1008. And looking at our flight plan, the descent should be 200, should be 22244. At 150 is 22841. And at 100 it is 220 and 39.
and execute that. All right, we're looking good so far. Now we'll go to the legs. I'll set this for the plan and let's see how it looks when we go through the steps. We're looking for any breaks or discontinuity. Goes all the way in. We have a good plan. All right. Now, we'll perform the initialization. We have our fuel has already been put on board. I'm going to use this just to see what it does. We're going to request the performance initialization and we'll see how it comes up and how close it is to this. All right, load. Well, the reserves are off. The FMC should be 2.6 at the most, so I'm going to change that, 2.6. And our trip together should be 4.7, 4.8. Cost index 6 is correct. Our flight level is actually 280. And the cruise wind is 232 at 39. And we'll execute that. Some of the information came in was fine, but some of it we needed to change. We're plus 11 degrees here, and we're not going to be doing any noise abatement. We're just going to do it our way. For takeoff, we have flaps 5, because it's a good long runway. All right, now we need 147 on here. Since we're going to be departing on runway 15, that's going to be 150 degrees. So we'll put 150 in. You know, you're sitting in that seat, you should be doing this bit. All right. Good. We've got that. And we should have a 109.9, .9, which is correct for our destination on the localizer. So now, two green lights on that, on the VOR, and put on the yaw damper. Good. We're getting ready to depart. We have just about got everything that we need set up. We need to put in one more thing. We need to put in our decision height it is going to be radio 50. So I'm going to push my radio button down. And then I'm going to make sure that this shows 50. So that will be our decision height. That's when it comes up on and tells me, you know, I have to make a decision whether to land or to abort. All right. Good. We are set to get our pushback and clearance. Now I have to do the the pushback according to the way that PMDG want to do it. They have that old, you know, what was it, shift P or control P to do a pushback. They don't allow that anymore. Now you have to do the whole thing according to, to this. So we're going to do a pushback to the left so our nose will go to the right and it will go 90 degrees 
we'll select the tug but before we do that we do need to get our clearance so we're going to contact the tower and ask them for a departure to the south Hamburg ground Ryanair 186 request taxi for departure to the south with India Ryanair 186 taxi 2 and hold short at runway 15 using taxiway Zulu 1 Alpha 5 Echo 1 contact tower on 126.85 when ready Taxi 2 and hold short runway 15 via taxiway Zulu 1 Alpha 5 Echo 1 Ryanair 186 So let's close the stairs and the door Tell the attendants to make sure everybody's sitting down. And then we'll get the tug to give us a pushback. All right, stairs are up. Crew is ready. Adjust my seat. So the next thing I've got to do now is contact ground and let them, the service crew down there. Cockpit to ground. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Release brake, brake release. Brakes released. And then we'll turn off the heat. Brakes released. Here we go. And then we're going to start with engine number two. So we'll turn engine number two on. The start valve is now open. We're waiting for the low pressure light that will go off. Here you can see it starting to build up. When this gets to 24, I'm going to introduce the fuel. There we go, there's 24. And we should start to hear the engines in a moment. There we go, We've got the engines going up. And we'll start engine number one. We'll check, yes, we've got 115 volts on engine number two, so we'll... Again, start valve is open, the pressure light is on. We're building this up. When we get to 24, we will introduce the fuel. There we go. Let's see if we get a good ignition on this. We're looking for the engine gas temperature to build up. There we go. Low pressure light has come off. And... We have ignition, so I'll turn off the... Yes, we've got a good start. Set the auto brake for RTO. And we'll go to flaps five. We've got our taxi lights are on. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the salute release from vents on your right and have a good flight. We have 115 volts on both engines. So we'll switch to that. Turn on the heat again. Turn off the APU and turn off the bleed there. Right, we have a clean board. We are now ready to go. We have kamikaze vehicles everywhere. We'll just have to ignore them. Ah, all right, here we go then. A little bit of fuel, and we will make our...
looking to A4. That should be this one coming up. Get a good view from these new uh, screens. I can see left and right as I cross everything. That's runway 23 that we've just crossed. And the weather is a little cloudy. And you can see there's still a lot of residual snow here in this part of Germany. Turn on the TCAS. And we have to turn up this taxiway coming up ahead. This is a very detailed airport scenery. There's the outer barn, there's traffic all over it. It's a very impressive scenery. Our flight time is about one hour. Checking the controls as we go along. We need to slow down just a little bit. Don't want to overspeed on the taxiway. Very detailed, very detailed indeed, this airport. My frame rate is 27, 28, so doing very well. I did have an issue with flashing on these individual instrument panels, instrument screens, and I got that solved. That was uh, setting my graphics too low, and also by limiting the frame rate. So I unlimited, took all the limiters off, and now I have smooth instrument readings. Okay, make this turn. And here we are at the whole short line, so I'll hold short here and put the brake on. I'm in the middle of a flight, I'm there ready to 
pull out and taxi into the main active runway and the doorbell goes. Hmm. You know, some flights are flawless. You get in, you sit in your seat, off you go. Beautiful air, picturesque scenery, you land smooth as silk, no problems. Hmm. Well, this was a situation where, well, imagine yourself sitting in the seat of your aeroplane and you glance out of the window and you see this. <laughs> yes, from that point on, you know that the flight is not going to be as you thought. And so it wasn't. I had a visitor. It was Father Patrick Walsh. He was from uh, Crooks over in Sheffield. He's the parish priest of St. Vincent's Church there. Anyway, he was here, here to visit with me. And so I plonked him in the first officer's seat, observing all social distancing, of course. Please, all social distancing regulations were followed. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Anyway, he had a lot of questions to ask. He's never sat up front in an aeroplane before, so he was very curious about a lot of things. So anyway... Now the flight has a first officer <laughs> of sorts. So here's how it went. <laughs> All right, so here we are. The brake is on. So I'll get the clearance now to take off. Tune in to the uh, tower and ask the clearance. Hamburg Tower, Ryanair 186 at runway 15, ready for takeoff, south departure. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 15, south departure, approved. Cleared for takeoff, runway 15, Ryanair 186. Right, we have our clearance, so turn on all the lights, engines go to continuous, brake off, give a little bit of power to move into position. We'll look right, look left, make sure that there's no oncoming aircraft. That would be embarrassing. And there's a fair bit of snow on this runway. brakes on. Last check. Instrument check. Check lights check. Good. Everything is good. Start the clock. Advance power to N1. We're watching the gauges line up. Push the toga button. And we're ready to go. Rotation B2. Positive rate. Gear up. Ryanair 186, you are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. And going on to autopilot. We have cleared on the gear. Gear is off. Climb rate is good. We'll 
be making our turn in just a moment to 226. very nicely. It's a mm -hmm. Hamburg City is down and slightly to our right. Good. We're flaps off now and Going to standard and 1007 is the barometric pressure at our destination. Here we go. Now we're making our turn on our flight path. Okay. Crew. You can go to work. Ha. We want two T's. Yeah. flight plan. See, here's our flight plan right there. See that? So, where are we going to? Oh, we're going to go to uh, Dusseldorf. From Hamburg? From Hamburg. Oh, that's not far. Yeah, that's where we took off from, down there. Oh, why do you have to go around in circles? Because where we need to go is down there, but the runway took us in that direction. So I spotted that, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> now, these three monitors I just added. And I'm running this whole thing now on two computers. I have one here and one there. Uh -huh. The one there is running the hardware, all of this. Yeah. And then the one here is running those three screens out there. Ah. That's because when I was using one computer to run everything, the frame rate was very low on the external ah. screen. Ah. Very low. Much better now. Oh, yes. But what, what, who's running the computers for these? This. I am. Where are the computers for that? So that side. And the other one's there. On this side. Yeah. I have two, one there, one there. In other words, I've got a bonnet, you lift the bonnet and there's two engines there. Yeah, I see, I see. You got What's that? that for? Ah, that's my bank angle uh, set. Just like they have on the real plane. Why have all these two of them? No, because each of them have a different function. Ah, and what is that area called there? This is the radio panel, or the radio pedestal. Ah, uh, and you can't just have an ordinary on-off button. Like, you have to have all of these push things and push back. Yeah. You've got to talk to people on the on route. You have to be able to switch frequencies. Ah. Uh, so, for instance, the frequency at our destination... Um, well, it's not showing it on here, but... That is 123.77, so 123. Now I've set the frequency in for our destination. To talk to the tower. Well, to get the landing information, but I'm going to switch to this, and this will give me the weather conditions right now at my destination. So let's listen in. Echo Delta, Delta, Lima, Airport Information, India, 1350, Zulu, weather wind, 148, at 17, visibility, 10, south, sky blue, temperature, 11.4, QNH, 1007, advice on initial contact information, India. Right. Yeah. 
107, we have that. And we've got the, it's going to be not bad weather conditions yeah. when we get is there. Is that still Dusseldorf down there? No, 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 Dusseldorf is behind us. What's that, just ordinary fields? That's, uh, yeah. that's Brotherboard. Over to our, uh, just to our front right is Bremerboard. Directly below us is Parsfeld. Ah, how do you know? It says so on here. This is my map. See. This is the route that we're following. In a moment, we're going to be going to the left. What are these five screens for you? Well, those two screens are for you. These two screens are for me, for right. navigation and yeah. aircraft attitude. The ones in the middle are for the engines, ah. and they they are the things that tell us whether there's oil, whether there's a fire, whether we've got thrust, and all the rest. So, I need to now go to 205. You're turning. I am. So now I'm aligning my heading here with this over here. Right. Now I'm going to have a quick look at the airport, airport that we're coming into. At the airport I need to have a final, uh, final fix of 232 on this. So I'm setting mine to 232. I'd like you to turn that and make that one 232. That's the first officer's I job. Mean, I make the first officer. Yeah, 232. Gentle. There you go. 232 it is. And now everything is lined up. So what you see on there is what I see on here. At the background of your screen, that little shady green that comes up from time to time. Yeah. Those are bumps or small hills. In other words, that's a terrain radar. It's looking for anything that is gonna be in our path. For instance, if we have a sudden red, I might want to look out to see if there's a mountain there that we're flying yeah, into. Well, better not. Better not. <laughs> and this one is set for weather, ah. and I want to see if there's any very strong weather cells. If they are, I will want to go around them if, if I can. Now, this and this is the same. This is the altitude. We're climbing up from 23,700 feet at the moment. We're still climbing. We're still climbing. And we're flying at a speed uh, of 0.66 knots back. Our ground speed is 371 miles an hour, and the true air speed, that is the speed that we're going through the air, yeah. is 397. Is that fast? I think you would have a trouble in your car keeping up. Now, the reason why the ground speed is lower than the air speed, yeah, right. we're flying into a headwind. Ah. So you've got the wind going in here, yeah. and you, we've got to fly through the air. Ah. Now, because would we've that got... Would slow it down? It would, yeah. Why it, is it faster then? It's not faster. It's actually, we are 30 miles slow because the headwind wind. Wind is 35 miles ah, an hour. Ah, right, right. So that's... And how cold is it out there now? Uh, right now, the outside air temperature is minus Two, two. That's very cold. That's minus 22 Celsius. That's telling me that we're coming up onto our altitude. We're now 800 feet and we'll be at our cruising altitude. When we get to the cruising altitude, the nose will dip down and we'll start to speed up a bit. And here we go. reached our cruising altitude. I'm making an adjustment here for our 
our landing for when we get to our departure. Now we'll let the passengers go wander about since we're at our cruising altitude. Let me just have you had that injection? Like no. That? Okay. Not yet. But I did talk to the medical officer this morning at the, I uh, at the medical center and uh, they're setting me up with an appointment. So they'll call me as soon as it's... I have it. Have you? Yeah. Oh. I'm last Tuesday. It's done in the arena. The arena. Well, you're, you're much younger than oh, I am. How in the world did you get it before I did? Well, it's just, uh, you know... Oh, the backhander! Backhander! Uh, All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, you should know that he's the parish priest over in Crooks. Is that? In Crooks in Sheffield. <laughs> he, he's he's a real villain. This one. <laughs> <laughs> They're hearing that now. They are. Now, by the way, everything I do on here is the same thing that you have to do in the real aeroplane. Nothing missing. If you miss it. Then, and you miss it on the real one, well, then things happen that you don't want. And you miss it on this? It, things happen that you don't want. No. <laughs> like, like Bishop Ralph crashing. Like Bishop Ralph crashing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, in fact, he's going to see this. <laughs> Is he? Yes. Yes, he's going to see this. Bishop, he's here. This is Paddy, he's here. A bad he, He's getting into mischief. A bad <laughs> A real bad one. Now, why did you press that handle for earlier on? That's the gear. Well, gears, you don't need gears on the thing, you don't need gears on the car. The landing gear are the wheels. Uh, now, this represents the two wheels of the left gear and the two wheels of now, the right gear. Is, if the wheels don't come down and you're about to land, what happens? Well, you make an awful lot of smoke and fire and the passengers get very upset and all the survivors and their families will sue the pants off of you. I see. So tell me this. Has, how is it we never hear of uh, these wheels not going down? Well... Like, if they did, are there emergencies when you have another set of wheels? Yes, over here there's, there's different ways of bringing the gear down. There's a hydraulic system is an emergency system, so um, okay. there, there are other ways of doing it, but uh, those are emergency procedures. Okay. We're up above the clouds now. Yes, we are. We're at uh, 28,000 feet. Yeah. I thought planes were about 35,000 feet in the air. Yeah, well, this is a short journey, because if you look here, this is our top of descent that is coming up. And at that particular point, we'll start to slow up and descend. And you always know when a plane is descending, it goes from boom. When you're in the real plane. No. Then, you you it, know it, it goes on if you no, done. No, no. I do. I well, do. then you've got a terrible pilot. <laughs> no, 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 I always know this. <coughs> I know when we're coming down. Not in in a hurry. But. Not in a hurry, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you mean to make an unscheduled landing yeah. at an unprepared field? Well, exactly. <laughs> okay. Start saying your prayers. <laughs> Say your prayers, yes. Well, that's the reason there was two priests on board this aircraft. We yeah. should be safe. Yeah. Well, if your prayers fail, mine may work. There you go, <laughs> right. Two for the... You see? You get two for the price of one today. That's right. Isn't that right, Bishop? <laughs> so everything is, what do you think? This is... Well, this is a far more exorbitant or flamboyant than the last one. This is so much more to it and better visibility. And much better graphics. Yeah. Right now, my graphics are 60 frames a second out there. Now, if something went wrong, what would start flashing and where? Everything would start flashing, and that would tell you where. Ah, well, what's the main thing it's flash? It's up here. 
Ah. So the forward overhead, this is your main control center for everything. See, right now, there are no lights. I thought your control center was there. No, 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 this is just, uh, these are the plates for approach and everything. Well, there's enough of stuff up there to, to fill a, a cart. Yeah, there is. Well, you never touch any of these, of course. You would. Like, for instance, if I've got a problem with icing, I'd have to turn on the anti-ice. What does that do? Keep the thing steady? Well, along the leading edge of the wing, there, there are uh, devices there. It's sort of a rubbery thing. But what it does, if ice builds up on the external size, is it inflates and deflates on some aircraft, or it has a heater that will break the ice off so it flies off. Yeah, and uh, like... Uh so you would have to have that on all the time when you're going on a long flight, would you? No. Right now, everything outside is clear, so we're, it's we're freezing. fine. It is freezing, but it's clear. If we start to go through clouds and it's freezing, then there's moisture. Wow. So there's a lot of risk of uh, rime ice building up on yeah. the leading edges of the aircraft. I wouldn't tell you to put those on. Well, if it gets really too bad, then we would get warnings. But what we do is we have to keep an eye on the temperature, the conditions, the weather, and whether or not there's a call to turn it on. Now the jet engines, now I'm not jet rated, I'm only propeller rated. Yeah. But on the jet engines, the outer cowling, because you've got the intake on the middle, yeah. the outer cowling can build up ice on the outer rim. Yeah. And if that's not taken care of, and you build up two big chunks of ice or anything like that, if it flies into the air intake yeah. on a jet engine, there are fan blades spinning around in there and it could knock them off. And that could cause a fire. Ah. So you have to watch the icing conditions. Yeah. Oh, you, bet, you bet you have. And the heat. Which heat? Heat. Oh, that's, yeah, the heat. Now, there are small probes that stick out underneath the fuselage, mm -hmm. and there's, I think the other one on this is on the wing. There are two. Now, these probes are like pit what they call pito tubes, and they pick up the air going in, and they run the instruments. They tell me the speed, they tell me barometric pressure, they tell me uh, lots of things. If they get blocked with ice, then I don't get a good reading. Now, there has been, in fact, some aircraft have four probes. Uh, like, I think it was an Airbus A380, it was in Air France, it was flying from somewhere in South America and going to Paris. And what it did is it disappeared off the radar over the South Atlantic Sea. I don't think they ever found all of the wreckage, but they determined that the cause was the ice had impacted on every one of those probes, and so therefore the pilots were responding to instruments that were in error. Ah. Let's take you in a car. You're going down the road, and your speedometer says you're going 60 miles an hour, and the police car pulls up behind you and says, Whew, I'm glad we managed to catch you. And you say, why? Because you were doing 200 miles an hour and you're not allowed to do it. But it only says 60 miles an hour on here. Sorry, but you get a ticket. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you can have instruments that may tell you one thing, but be different. Ah. How about a faulty fuel gauge? You're going down to, um, I don't know, you're going down to go visit the Cardinal because you've got designs on a red hat. Of course. So you're going down the motorway, the gauge in your fuel gauge in your car says you are full, and then suddenly the engine packs in. Empty. And you happen to be empty. Well, there goes your aspirations of ever becoming a Cardinal. Down the Swanee. Down the Swanee, absolutely. That's ah, now. We, yeah. uh, we started our descent a few minutes ago. Yeah. So I need to start getting busy for the landing.
You're right. All right. So I need to tell the crew, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have started our descent into Dusseldorf. We are on course and we should be landing in approximately 20 minutes. Yeah, you do it on the... You say that. It doesn't come across automatically on the... No. no. No, the pilot, you're sitting in the aeroplane yeah. and you say, uh, uh, this is the captain speaking, yeah. you know. Well, who do you think is speaking? Yeah, I know. But then again, when you're like, sort of, you get voiceovers on all such things today, don't you? Like when you're coming in, like for instance, when you're traveling on a bus and it says, that, Oh, your next stop is, yeah, oh, that's automated, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. No, but it, in an aeroplane, people like you. Know, you're stuck in a in a cylinder. People like to know where they are and what they're doing. Now you can see we're starting to descend. Those clouds are getting closer, and here you can see we've just passed a checkpoint. Osnabrück is just down there. Ah. And the city of Munster is just up ahead and down yeah. there. And that's not near Innsbruck, is it? No, no, we're a little ways away from Innsbruck. In fact, to our rear is Hanover. All right. I need a drink. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm not going to get drunk, though. Go <laughs> on. Oh, well. We're in control. We're well, in control. We're on autopilot, so you're okay. Well, we're on autopilot at the moment. Everything is being and run by the public. Uh, the autopilot take us down to the public without you? When you go asleep, you'll be like this and take you down. Is that right? I have to do something, otherwise, it will not change. Oh. See, I had to change the altitude so the autopilot would say, right, well, we'll start to descend. If I didn't change that, we'd be going straight. Ah. Because ah. I've not given it permission to do any descent. All right, so could you have given it permission? Automatically, or would it pick No. Up? I did, because I changed this. Right. Okay, we're getting close. We should start to... 2377. We should start to pick up the automated uh, information from the. See, we, pilots do get automatic information transmitted over the radio. Yeah. But you need to be within range to pick it up. Ah. And it tells you the current conditions. And that automated radio message is changed every hour and it's given an identification, and you'll hear that when it comes on. But if there's a sudden change, of, I mean a rapid change in weather conditions, then they'll put another one out, so pilots will know what the conditions are ahead of time. Yeah. Because the information I'm going to get is going to determine how I'm going to make my approach and landing. Yeah, I see, I see. stuff you drink. Oh. Whiskey is happens to be the latest um, uh, one. They go Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, and so on. So we have been given uh, information whiskey for landing at that airport. So when I call up... Whiskey? No, when I call up the airport to call the tower and say, I am so-and-so, I am at location so-and-so, and I want to land on so-and-so. Um, and then you say, and I have information whiskey. Oh, good, then they know that the conditions are 20 miles clear. Ah, all right. So I already know, and I know I'm coming in to land on 23 left or 23 right. Now I've got this set up for coming in on 23 left. Right. 
Right. I'll bet you they'll want to route me on 23 right. Because you set up this computer yourself for all these things. Built it? Yeah, yeah. I built it. So, could you build it for an ordinary commercial aircraft? This is a commercial aircraft. Yeah, but could you do it in a real plane? Yes. Build up the computer like this. No different. If you stepped into the cockpit of a real 737, you would see this. And is that a modern thing, 737? Yeah. It's Ryanair has over 600 of them. Right. That's what you fly when you fly Ryanair. And it'll be exactly the same. Exactly this. So, amazing, isn't it? What, you, what this is, is exactly what Ryanair are flying. And my call sign, by the way, is Ryanair 186. And if you notice, look at my uh, registration, EI, EI, that's some place called Air. I've never heard of it, but I understand it's a small, insignificant little country somewhere off. Air. Air. Yeah. Air. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes I uh, know it. Oh, yes. Have you heard of it? Bill Kenny. Oh, well, I've uh, heard of it. You've heard of it? Bill Kenny. Kill where, Kenny. <laughs> where everyone knows me. <laughs> Including the local guardy, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, set this to course 242. We're making our change. That little dotted line yeah. is 30 miles from the tower. So if you sent this on to trainee pilots, Ryanair would bite off your arm, an arm and a leg. You could train them from nothing. You could tell them exactly how to fly a plane. Well, look, I'm a commercial pilot. I've got the licenses and everything, yeah. but only for propeller aircraft. I can fly DC-6s, C-47s. Well, this is no different from Ryan. No, 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 no. Now, wait a minute. I'm a propeller aircraft flyer, mm. okay? I do not have a license to fly a jet. Ah. This is a jet. Ah. And to learn how to fly this, I had uh, my Ryanair pilot pal, he came up came and taught, here. came here and taught me how to fly it. Ah. He brought me the books, he brought me the Ryanair manual. So could he give you a license? No, it would be the uh, Civil Aviation Authority that would give me the well, license. Would you have to go fly one first? Oh yeah, there are courses. take a real 737 out for a spin? It costs who? Well, you if you wanted to fly it. No. You're looking at about 25,000 quid an hour. Really? Well, let me put it you this way. When I fueled this particular aircraft for just the flight between uh, Hamburg and Dusseldorf, and that's 197 miles. I loaded 5.4 tons of fuel. Not gallons. Tons. Tons. Yeah. And a few drops, as my pal David would say, would keep your car running for a year. Good drop. So that's what's polluting the environment then. Are you kidding? The aircraft is... <laughs> got these big engines. Can they not fly it on some other, like electricity or something? Wouldn't fly. Why not? Cars go on it. They get rid of fuel. Yeah, but you try getting it into the air and fly. Electric. With the weight. I see. Is there any other thing? What about nuclear? I'd send it up fairly fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if, what do you want? Uh, a bomb? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah, I've, got to, I've got to now watch the temperature. Yeah, okay, I'll let you be. Good, we're plus six, so I don't have to worry about ice. Right, right. See, now we're plus seven. 
So I don't have to turn on the anti-ice because we've now entered the cloud layer. I see. All right, now I need to start getting myself prepared for landing. In a moment, I'm going to be entering their, uh, their zone and I'm going to need to slow up because I'm doing, I'm way too fast. I'm 256 miles an hour at the moment. Too, that's too fast. Yeah. 247, it says. See, now, in a car, when you put your foot on the brakes, the brakes stop you because you've got the friction of the road against the tires to slow you down. Yeah. When you're in the air, what friction do you have? None. Exactly. So how do you slow down? We have what we call a speed brake. When I put the speed brake on, see the wings are like this, but with the speed brake, you get a flap that comes up like that, and the wind hits that. So it stops. And it slows you down. It doesn't stop you, it slows you down. That's called a speed brake. Mm. If you've ever sat close to where the wings are, and you've seen them come I have. up and go down, they come up, that's the speed brake. Now, this will tell you, when I put the speed brake on, it will start to slow me down and you will see the controls activate on here. Right. So, uh, we're oh, hold on. I've got to um, get in touch with the airport. Oh, crash. Tower one, one eight six six two minor miles northeast with X-ray to land. Line 186, tower, flight straight in, runway 23 right, altimeter 1007. Where's the airport? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Fly straight in, runway 23 right, right now. See, they've 186. got me coming into 23 right, and I want to go to 23 left, but I'm unable to make that change in this aircraft because there's a program that uh, I've got loaded in, but unfortunately it's not working properly because the engineers are revamping it. So I, I'm not able to go and tell them that I want two, three left. But I'm gonna go in on runway two, three left. No, 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 I can go two, three right. I can change, why not? Um, yeah, I suppose I could do that. But I do, no, I don't want to. I want to go in on two, three left because that's oh, close okay. to the terminal. So that's what I'm going to do. Ah, now, I've just been told the drag is required, so there's the spoilers, you see? Yeah. They're now sticking up like that and they're slowing me down. Because that's what I need to do, is I need to slow down. Okay, go flaps one. And that will slow me down even more. See, it says here, drag required. So I'm putting on the drag. Now the airport is out there. In fact, it's right there. See that? No, I no, can't see over there. Over okay. the top, okay. But it's it's oh. over there. Have an idea. It's it's down there. Okay. See, that's the other thing. You know, when you've never been uh, in the cockpit, you say, "Well, it should be easy to find a runway because yeah. I can see a road on the road when I'm driving." Yeah. But when you're up here, try looking for a runway. Well, you wouldn't need to look for it if it's automated. Yes, then, you would. You would need to know because you've got to land on it. Yeah, but shouldn't the thing be heading straight for the runway anyway? It's not running straight for the runway. The runway's out over there. Oh. So you have to direct it to the runway. I do. Okay, now, flaps two. Right. Okay, lights are on. I 
I'm forgetting some of the things that I'm supposed to be doing by yeah, yeah, keep talking going, keep with going, you. Keep going. Now we've slowed up, we're now 180, 190 miles an hour. Uh, two airspeed is 206. And how fast do you have to be going to stay in the air? Well, if I get below 140, I've got a problem. So I mean. Yeah. So you have to watch, have to watch your speed. But there's the runway is out, out there. See I that? See it, I see it now. No, 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 not that little one. No. The big one out there. Oh. See that gray area? Yeah. That's the runway. That's, that's the airport. Way on the horizon. Yeah, out there. That's where we're going. Oh. Okay, now go to flex five. See, and there's my flap indicator. Okay. I need to put the drag on, slow up a little bit more. Is that another airport then? Yeah, it is. Ah. But it may not be uh, long enough for uh, a jet that's coming in to land at 140, 145 miles an hour. So I need one that's got longer runways. In a moment, there'll be a point I'm going to... I think he's going to land at that little one. No, no, no going to land over there on the big one. See, there's two runways out there. I can't see them. That's because you're not a pilot. You get used to it. You get used to spotting runways. Because they're very small at this altitude and this distance. But you have to need to know where they are so you can land on them. You've got to point, you've got to point the aeroplane at the runway. If you can't see the runway, Guess what? You got a problem. It doesn't point automatically. No, you've got to do it. What do you think you're there for? Yeah, what do you think they're paying you the money for? Well, it does for? everything else. Why don't you just do that as well? <laughs> it doesn't. It, it's got to do what you tell it. Everything. The automated pilot should know everything. Oh yeah. You think so? So yeah. next time you're taking a flight, and you're sitting in the back. Worry that the pilot is awake. If he's struck blind. If he's struck blind, you've got a problem. <laughs> See, there it is. There's the runway. There are two runways out there. There's one on the right, and there's one on the left. We're going to go to the one on the left, even though we've been cleared to go to the one on the right. Straight oh, I see there. it ahead of us. Yeah. No, there. Yeah, yeah. On the black part. Yes. Ah, yeah. Well, uh, that's what I was asking you before. Okay, now we're coming in. Why is that area black? It's just uh, the airport scenery that's showing it. And it's been cleared for, of snow for uh, tr air traffic. Now we're coming in. I'm going to start to make some changes here. Engines are continuous. Flaps 10. And VOR lock is on. What's that for? I'm locking on to the target, Mr. Spock. Lock on, Mr. Spock. You've heard that. Lock on target. Yeah, lock on. Lock on. I am locking on to a radio signal that is coming off. And it's showing right here. So I'm right on the crosshairs. It's showing that I'm on track. And I'm going on to the approach mode. Oh, I've got a crosswind. So uh, instead of going straight, I'm crabbing. I'm now flying sideways. Because look, see, I've uh, got a crosswind. I see. You have to watch the blinking wind. You have to. Well, yeah, you're flying in it until you get on the ground. Okay, let's... What I want you to do is I want you to pull this out and push it down. Right, I'm the co-pilot. You're the co-pilot. Pull it out. Pull. Good. Now, that's the outer marker. We're right on course. Why is that going boom, boom? It's a signal. Okay, so a lock knowledge. Clear to land. Runway 23 right. Right. Full flex. 
engines are correct, everything is set, good. And don't land too soon. No, nope. but that's where we're coming in. Now you can see there are two runways there. Are you going on the right? Now, you see the little uh, lights to the left? You've got white and red. Yeah. Now, I need to keep white and red together. There's four lights there, two red and two white. If they all become red, I'm too low. If they all become white, I'm too high. Okay. So, I'm coming in. I'm coming right in on course. Now, the, the lights have done nothing yet. No, they haven't, because I'm coming down perfectly on course. And if they turn red? Then I'm too low. But I'm coming right in on, on this signal. I'm coming in on on the signal that's coming out of that. But it's a crosswind, so it's... 500. 500, check. Four hundred. Too low. Terrain. Yeah. So you're going to go back up? Three hundred. As the middle marker. Approaching minimums. One hundred. Minimums. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Line one eight six, contact ground on one two one point six. Reverse thrusters are on. Line one eight six, please acknowledge. One two one point six four, line one eight six. All right, begin clean up. Well, I didn't hear any bump when we went out. That's because I made a perfect landing. Oh, well, well. Now, stick my arm out, I'm going to turn left. With speed. And my speed is 30 miles an hour. I need to get past the whole short lines, and then... Nothing else coming. Break. I need to get clearances. And will you? Yeah. See, there's a lorry okay. over there. Now I need to start the APU. Let the crew go to... Now I've got to go down there and around the outside and find... Parking lot. Park well, I need to go to parking gate one. That's because Eurowings, when they did this flight, they went to gate one. Right. See, now I'm building up. This material, where did this come from? What material? All this stuff. It comes from here. No, no, where, where did you buy it from? What? All that. Or what? All the accoutrements here. Oh, I built it up over time, over 16 years. Bit here, bit there. But most of it comes from Spain. It's amazing it comes from Spain. Yeah. I thought they, our labor was brought through. No. Uh, got a lot of technology in Spain these days. A place called Huelva, down in the southern part, not too far from Gibraltar. So, so in other words, there must be a lot of people into this there in Spain. Oh, yeah. Look at this. See, I've got kamikaze vehicles. You're going to crash there. He's going to crash me. See, they take absolutely no notice of me at all. How did you escape hitting him? Because I'm bigger than him. Ah. Right. Size counts, you know. Size counts. Yes, anyway, there's the main terminal of Dusseldorf. Ah. And is that exactly as it looks in Yeah, here? that's how it looks. Dusseldorf. Yeah. It's a fine airport, isn't it? Oh, yeah, big. It is. It's a big one. There's a big populated area. That's why. Oh, yeah. There's no litter there. No, they're very industrious here. See, now I've got to go around. See where that, that sticks out? 
Yeah, that's, right that's, the back of that. that's terminal one. That's terminal two. This is terminal one. I've got to go around it. And to the down other side. To the other side and then park at gate number one. There's another aeroplane coming in to land on the same runway that we just... Uh, Where is it? Out there. Oh. It's nine miles away. Oh. Now, oh, let's see which... They're turning soon, now. I will be, yep. In fact, I'll take this one. Now, the job is I have to stay on the middle of these yellow lines. I have to straddle them. You have to be the middle, I see. Because of my wings, they stick out. Oh, you don't want them. If, I'm, if I go too close, if I cut a corner, I can cut my wings off. That's right. And then yeah. Mr. O'Leary... Even mm. I understand that. Ah. Yeah, you, it's like having a mirror that sticks out quite a ways. And Mr. O'Leary wouldn't be happy. Or he would not be happy at all. Not at all. So now we go down here. See? That goes out there. No, this one ah. goes down here. Right. Stay in center. Stay on center. And this takes me to gate number one. Well, well, well. And it's at the bottom end. And the place is absolutely deserted. Well, got this pandemic thing you may have heard about. <laughs> so I've got to go and dock at that last one down there. And? And not hit anything in the process. Well, there's not much to hit, is there? No. Coming in here now. Yeah, I'm going to make a turn in just a moment. Because there's another yellow line here that I've got to straddle to take in. And my wheel, my front wheel, is just back of us here. You're going to crash into that building? No, because I'm going to turn here. And I need to go slow. Going, keep going, keep speeding up, go slow. I have to make sure that uh, that is going to line up with the hatch. Oh, all right. Brakes on. And now, and then you're there. Power off. And it's all virtual. Turn off the engine completely. Yep. Now I'm going to go through all of the shutdown. The engine. Not one switch. There's a lot. A lot that you have to do. Make sure everything is cleaned up. All the switches are off. See all of these? You get all of these lights that flash at you when you do something wrong. Ah, well, that not flashed APU yet. generator, I've got 115 volts. And there's the IRS, it's turned off. That's the, the GPS localizer. Right. Uh, local lo locator. It oh. tells us where we are on the Earth's surface. Right. So I've got everything down. We'll open up the stairs and the door. So the forward service hatch is open and the equipment is coming out so people can get off. Is that it? Well, as soon as the, all the engines are off, everything is 
shut down. Ah, keep this at 10,000. Okay. Right, now the last thing I need to do is turn off the ET and switch off the battery. All gone. We are now cold and dark, as they say. Right. There's nothing on now. Nothing on now. Except that. Except, well, that's the brake light. Oh, I see. Well. Brilliant. I'm we, really we, we made it. I, I, I might make it as a pilot. <laughs> uh, It'd be a bit jittery at the legs. Uh, if we told everybody who oh, was flying. What's coming on? What's that? Well, that's the weather. It's raining. That's, that's, that's sleet. That's sleet that's coming down. Have you told everyone, finish, that I was piloting the plane? Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you enjoyed <laughs> flying Ryanair today with co-pilot co <laughs> Paddy Walsh himself. <laughs> so let's, I want to get off. <laughs> anyway, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, so brilliant. come and fly with us again, if you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.